Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and in today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to build your own auto raffle ticket system using Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint List, and Microsoft Forms. Now, I have shown you about three years ago how to build this, but over there, I just went ahead and packaged the whole solution and uploaded it to the user community. But it's been three years now, so I'm not going to walk you through it step by step. So stick it on. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. Now, before I go into the technical piece, I do want to give you an overview of what is involved for this raffle ticket process. And here's a good illustration of it. Now, each of the attendees for this conference or the summit will go ahead and fill out a Microsoft form for each of the breakout sessions. For each form, there is a flow that is triggered and the flow will take that information and save it to a SharePoint list. So that's the first piece. Now, when it's time for the end of the conference and then there is a raffle ticket drawing involved, the coordinator who has the app will go ahead and hit the button on the app and then the app will go ahead and trigger the flow. That flow will go and do a RAND function to get an item randomly from that SharePoint list, which involves all these attendees and goes and picks one. And that per person's name has gone ahead and actually presented back in that same app. And that's how the raffle ticket system works. So this is the overall logic. Now let's jump into the technical piece. Building the Microsoft form is a simple piece, but I do want you to focus your attention on two main items that we need to collect. One is the full name. And the second thing is we need a unique way to identify that person. And an easy way to do that is with an email address. Now, when you are getting an email address, just put in some little subtitle saying that, hey, this email address is used primarily for the raffle ticket. No spam emails will be sent to you in the process. So kind of make that clear to your attendees. That gives them their peace of mind. So let's just build a simple one because that's the easy part. So I will come over here. I've logged into my Microsoft Forms and my Microsoft Forms. I'm going to go ahead and click on a new form. On that new form, I'll go ahead and call this as my you know, raffle ticket demo for session one you know, I'll just I'll just give it something over here and the first question I'm going to ask is uh, your full name and I will make this required and then I'll also go and say your email address and I will also make that required which is there by default and then finally I can just put something in you know uh, your thoughts about this session and we can make that as in a um, uh, non required, just, you know, something that users can do. So that's the easy part. And we'll just go ahead and do a preview just to show. Okay, that's awesome. We got to keep in mind that the form is raffle ticket demo for session number one, and we are golden. So I'll just go ahead and now uh, it's I see it's already saved. That's what forms does. We'll get out of the forms. And that's a raffle ticket demo for session number one. And we're already completed with the first one. Now you got to keep in mind that in your section, you will have multiple forms for each session. So plan that accordingly because you know how your conference or your SharePoint Saturday or your summit works best. So like this, you plan for that. Now we're going to go ahead and um, skip gears and switch gears. Now we're going to switch gears and work on our SharePoint list. So I'm going to go now to my site contents <clears throat> and I'll create a list. Now, one of the things that I do is for my list, specifically the columns, I try to match it one to one with the questions I have over there on the form. Now, I know that can be difficult sometimes because the questions can be long, but at least make it very user friendly that, oh, okay, yeah, this column is tied to that question. You just kind of understand that way and you know make it easy. So I'm going to go ahead and now call this as my raffle ticket live demo. And I'll keep that as is. Go back to my list. I'll go ahead and change the list settings. Go back to my list name. Just clean up the, uh, let me just clean up the um, list name. So we're good over there. And then I'll go ahead and actually modify some of the columns as well. So the title, I'll go ahead and change that to full name. I will also go ahead and add two more columns. One will be for email address that's right there and then there was the question so in my question when i went in here i said your thoughts about the session so i'll kind of put the same thing your thoughts about this session and i'll make it a multiple line of text just to make sure i have enough i go ahead and make it as a plain text six are good so i'll just click okay over here 
and I'll go back and just modify these columns. Very good. And go ahead and change the your thoughts about this session. Okay, so we are good. Now, here's the other thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and put in two more columns. One is to identify which session that was so you can get a session name. Second thing is you want to go ahead and also say, has this person already won a lottery ticket or not? So just basically say one and then the default, you can put that as a yes. So here's what I mean is that you can go ahead and put that in as session name. Keep that there because that's it's going to go ahead and automatically pull that and then I'll just put that in for one and my one, I'll put that in as a choice in my choice that I'll put that as a no, yes. And the default, I'll leave it as no. And I do that as okay. Go ahead and change the name again. I always do this for my own sake, because sometimes in the future, I might have to, um, you know, make a rest api call or something and it's very important that i have the column names without any spaces in them because then i'll have to deal with that percent 20. that's just my best practice it's something that you can follow if you wish so we're good over here and now we're also done with the sharepoint list so we already got two things done so now let's switch gears and go take a look at the power automate flow the first one which is going to go ahead and pull all the information in for each and every raffle ticket entry so in Power Automate Flow, I'll go in and I'll make sure that I click on this plus create. And in my plus create, I'm going to do an automated cloud flow. So I click on the automated cloud flow. I can go ahead and save it, uh, select the trigger over here. In my case, I actually see it. In your case, if you don't, go ahead and click on skip. And then over here, we'll call this as a raffle on the title basically is that the raffle ticket flow for demo in my case i'm calling it demo what you want to do is that you want to put the name of the form for which this flow is triggering that way you can go ahead and keep track of what which flow this is tied to which raffle ticket all right so just kind of keep that in mind so i just did that and i did the naming over here right on the top left now over here i see microsoft forms if you don't simply search for it and you will find that so on my microsoft forms the first trigger and the only trigger is when a new item is uh, response is submitted so i'll select that and here you need to go ahead and pick your form. So it's important that you know what your form name is. In our case, it was first ticket demo for session one. I selected that. Next, I need to add another step. And that one is also going to be a Microsoft Forms. I don't see forms. So I do a search for it. There it is. I select that. And then the next action, which in this case is the only one. I mean, I can go and click on see more, but this is the only one I get it. So I've selected that. And now I go and grab the form ID. Now it says form ID, but when you click on the drop down, it's actually just the form name. So I selected that. And here on the response ID, I go and select the response ID. And that's the two important steps. Now the next step is the SharePoint list, because I'm going to go and add that to the SharePoint list. So I've done that on my SharePoint side. I'll go and click on that the SharePoint and I'll search for create item. And then now I go to go ahead and pick up the site address and the SharePoint list. So in my case, it was the Power Platform test side. The list we had just created was actually at the bottom, or I could have done a search for it. I call that as Raffle Ticket Live Demo. And when I do that, I go and see my columns. So the full name, again, is tied to the full name from the form. So it kind of makes it a little easier when you're submitting it. So that's the full name, email address, email address, your thoughts about the session, your thoughts about the session. Kind of see what I mean when I'm saying it's easier? All right, in the session name, this is where you want to actually put in the session name for which that raffle ticket was put. So that way you can keep track of that. This is also very good to keep track of all the raffle information that you've selected for future purposes where you want to send them a thank you and give them specific information that, hey, thank you for this session that you attended. You know, this helps you capture that information. So in our case, I'm just going to randomly say that was session you know, one, but you can actually put your session name that, hey, this was Daniel Christian's raffle ticket demo session, you know, something like that. And the defaults are always going to be no, which is why I intentionally left the default in the session in the SharePoint list as no, because it will go and capture that. So we are done from this first flow. I'll go ahead and click on save. Moment I click on save, it'll tell me everything is good. You know, you can also do a flow check, flow check, zero errors, zero warnings. We are in good shape. So one of the first things you're going to do is now test it. And the test it is going to be, let's fill out the form. So I'll go in the free view and the preview, and I'm going to say, uh, John Doe, I'm going to say John Doe at Contoso.com. Um, it was spectacular. 
I learned so much. And then I click on submit. Moment I click on submit, it will go ahead and trigger the flow. The flow gets triggered. The SharePoint list gets updated. So we'll just come over here and we'll give it a second. There you go. It ran successfully. And then we go take a look at the SharePoint list. And voila, we've got that information. Full name, John Doe, John Doe's email address, the comment that the person posted, session name, and then one and on. So we've already accomplished a lot, but I want to pause over here and tell you a few more things. Now, in the paper raffle ticket system that we have followed, we did two things. One of them is you would give them a raffle ticket. You would kind of break it in half, give them one piece, and you had one piece. Well, now we don't have this receiving one piece option because this is completely electronic. However, you can accomplish that by adding an extra step in this flow. So in the flow, when you come in here, you can actually go ahead and put that extra step by after the create item, you can go ahead and send an email. That email will be sent to the email address which the user submitted. And over there, go ahead and say that, thank you for filling out the form for this session. Hold on to this email as your confirmation for the ticket. You can do that and make sure that it goes to that person's email address. If you want to be extra cautious, CC one of your mailboxes as well. So you have that as a verification. You can also go ahead and use that SharePoint's list ID number as a reference ticket number. So you've got quite a few options over here and I wanted to present that to you in case you wanted to do that. All right. So keep that in mind. All right. So now let's move forward with creating a simple power app. So in the power app, I'm going to come here. It's going to be a power app studio. I'm going to my apps and in my apps, I'm going to go ahead and create one and I go to the canvas and I say it as a auto raffle ticket live demo. Click on create and on the create, we are inside the app. Now I usually like to do it as the tablet format. I leave the default, you know, 16 by nine, but you can go four by eight, whatever works for you. You can just go and do that. Um, I've already gone ahead and saved it. So we are good over there. And here you can go ahead and basically do all the design work that you want to do. Design work includes you can go ahead and put on all your sponsors logos. This is the place to put the sponsors logos. So I come here and I'll go ahead and grab all of these. And basically I just go ahead and now put that, Hey, if you are a gold sponsor, then all your gold sponsor uh, icons or logos can come in this top section over here. If you are a platinum one, you know, basically as the platinum will be on the top, the gold, this is basically just to identify, you know, which of your sponsors at which level. Uh, you can also go and, you know, use the size option. So if you're a platinum sponsor, your icon size will be much bigger. If you're a gold, it's a little smaller. And if you're a silver, it's even smaller. So I'm just sharing some of the ideas. These are the ideas that I've used. But the design piece is completely at your disposal. All right. What I'll just do is I'll just go and put in a little text. This is saying that auto raffle ticket. So at least we know what this is. Auto raffle ticket and grab that go and make it a little bit bigger right there so you know what this is awesome and one of the things is my pet peeves is if it's going to be a label for display purposes i just put it as view it's just my personal pet peeve all right so next thing we got to do is now focus on two things we're going to add a text control here because this text control is basically going to go ahead and display the information about who the winner is so i'll take out the default over here I'll also go ahead and make it presentable and we at least because the name, once the, we hit, put a button and the person's name comes in, it's going to be presented over here. So that piece needs to be a little bit nicer. And then I go ahead and also add a button because the button is where you're going to go ahead and do the selection. All right. So these are the two important things that we have. The, lay, uh, the text where the name is going to be automatically generated and also the button which we're going to click to submit the request. Let me go and save it is right here. And when I do the submit, I am going to now trigger a flow. Therefore, this is a good time to pause over here on the apps and let's switch gears and look at the flow. So now I go back to my flow, click on manage. I'm going to create a new flow and I'll go and say automated cloud flow. And this is going to be the auto raffle ticket flow. I'll go ahead and basically click on, well, I can actually skip on this right now. Uh, here I got to go and type in the on the untitled and I'll type in the name auto raffle ticket flow and this is going to come from power apps now if you don't already see power apps as one of your triggers go and search for it and then you get it so that's basically our power app now I don't I'm going to for now for this demo I'm just going to select the power apps uh, you can go and use power apps version 2 if you want but I'll just stick with power apps for now 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and now get the items from the SharePoint list. Now this is where we're going to go ahead and get the items from the SharePoint list, only those where the one column is no. So we're going to use the OData query for that. So let me show you what that means. I'll go to SharePoint, I'll click on the SharePoint, and here I'll type in get and use the get items, the plural with the items with the S, not the singular, it's the items. And once you do that, you go and put in the site address, which in our case was the Power Platform test site, go ahead and get the list. The list was a little bit to the bottom. It was the raffle ticket live demo. And then now I click on the show advanced options and I'm going to do an OData query. Now over here, the OData query, the format is very important. I'm going to use a string column name equals and then inside single quotes put what is the value now do you see why i took so much time building that sharepoint list to make sure that my column names are a lot easier because if your column name had some spaces then you would have to do the underscore x020 or the percent 20. this is why i went ahead and took that extra time over there right so now you understand that so just to be sure i got to go back to my sharepoint list and the column i'm going to get is the one because i want to only pull those items where one equals no I don't want to pull the anyone which is new, which well, one equals yes, because only those who have not won are the ones who are going to be in the raffle ticket. So I'll come back here. And also I need to validate what my column name is. I already know what it is, but if you are forgotten it, this is how you validate. I'll come into the back settings of the SharePoint list. I click on one. And once I've clicked on one, I go to the top right and I get the equals and then the column name. So in my case, it is field equal and after the equal, I just go ahead and put my cursor, I highlight it, do a control C, I literally copy it, come back to my flow, and in the filter data, I put in this um, one space EQ for equal colon, I mean, a single quotes, and then I type in the text, which is no. So I'll do a save now, because that's basically my O data query that I have to do. Also keep in mind that NO needs to be exactly the text which is there in the SharePoint list, which is the uppercase N and then the zero case uh, O. So keep that in mind. Awesome, let's keep moving forward. The next thing I'm going to do is I wanna go in and now get a length of all the data that's coming in. Basically, I just wanna go and see how much data is coming in. Now for that, I can basically first put it into a compose and I'm gonna put a compose and I'll put in the function called as length and this length can sometimes be misleading, but the length is basically the total count of how many SharePoint items that are coming in. So basically I open a bracket, this little text comes up, it can get a little confusing, it gets in the way. So go ahead and move your mouse outside the closing bracket and you put it back to a left and then that little distraction goes away. All right, a little tip that I shared with you. Go back into the dynamic content and then in the get items, go ahead and click on value and click on okay and it shows up over here. I go and click on save as well. So let me pause and explain this to you, is what I'm trying to do. I do the get items and then I go and get a length of it because I wanna get the total count of how many items there are. And then from that count, I'm gonna randomly pick one using the rand function. And getting a count of all the items, specifically those filtered items for all the people who have not won yet, is the most accurate way to do it. Because I know people would say that, Daniel, why are you doing the length? Because SharePoint already has a list ID column the last list ID column should be functional. And in a perfect scenario, that's great. But what if when you're going through testing and you're testing some of the forms, data is coming in, you go and delete it, you know, to prep for the actual event, you've gone ahead and totally, you know, added deleted items and that whole list item column, um, ID column gets completely, well, messed up. So that way I can't rely on that ID column. I am going with this count, which is the length, all right? So thought I'll explain that to you because that's a vital decision, a vital point of this whole random function to work. Cool, so next thing I'm going to do now is I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna go and assign a value to that variable right there. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna click on variable and I'm going to use the initialized variable and I'll go ahead and give that variable a name. I'll call it as var random. It will be an integer. And then here I am going to click on my expression and we are going to use the rand. The rand is going to be, I open the brackets again, outside, inside, and the rand is going to be from zero comma, I'll go ahead and click on the random context and then it's gonna be the outputs because the data is coming from there. So that's gonna be our rand. This is what's going to randomly go and pull a number for our raffle ticket process. A very important information, a very important step. I'll go and click on close. So now that I know a random number, I'm gonna use that as an ID. That, hey, here is my random ID 
go ahead and get me the value of that ID. And for that, I have to use the get item number. Remember, the first one was get items. Second time, we're just getting the item number whose ID matches that random one. So I'll go now to my SharePoint list. I'll type in again SharePoint, select the SharePoint, and here I'll type in get, and I'll get the get item. Again, I gotta go put in the site, that doesn't change. I gotta go get the list name, that doesn't change. So got ahead and gotten the both of those. And then the ID number, the one I'm getting, is actually the random one that I picked. So I got that, which is awesome. And then next thing is I need to go ahead and update that item. So when I go and do SharePoint, again SharePoint, and I'm going to type in update. And in the update, it is the update item. And here I'll go ahead and now do the same thing. Get the site, get the list. right there the ID came from the get item ID so just gonna make sure that you're using the get item one and then after that I'll go ahead and also um, the full name in my case was required so I have to put the full name here um, if you go ahead to your SharePoint list and you unmark that as uh, necessary you don't have to do that but in this case the important thing is I need to switch the one value to yes that's the main reason why I'm doing this because I got the get item but I gotta go and say that, hey, this is the, the randomly we picked this person, which is great, mark this person as one. And then finally, we gotta go ahead and respond. So I go to my Power Apps again, I don't see it, so I gotta search for Power Apps, which is right there, you can click on that, and then that's gonna be respond to a Power App. And then here, I'm gonna put in two things. I'm gonna, both of them are text, so this one is going to be name, and over here, I for the value thing, it is the, skip the update item, scroll down and search for the get item, which is right there, the get items full name. And then I also go for verification because I told you we need to get that unique information. I'm also going to go ahead and respond back with the email. Same thing, it is not the update item, scroll down and search for the get item. And the get item, we go ahead and get our email address. We'll go and save it. And that is the big flow that we have to build to randomly pick a winner. All pretty simple, all very straightforward. Key thing, do not miss a step, otherwise it'll all go back, all right? So it's fun, successful, everything looks good. Good practices to go into a flow check. Well, no errors, no warnings. We are golden, let's move forward. So now let's go and switch gears to Power Apps again. In Power Apps, in the submit, on select, I want to go ahead and now get run a flow. So I come here to my action, I'll go and go to Power Automate. In my Power Automate, I see the auto raffle ticket flow, which we just built. That's what it is, auto raffle ticket flow. So I'll go and click on that. It's adding, and it went ahead and populated this information here. Now, I'm not sending any information, so I can go and click this as close, and we are good. Like when I come back over here, and I go and close the bracket, and we are good. But I want to get the information. So what I'm getting, which is the uh, the full name and the email address, I want to save it to a variable. Therefore, I'm going to do a set var winner comma, and then I'll go back to the end and I'll close it. And this is how that's going to work. So I'm going to actually go and save that information, and I'm going to save it to a variable because remember, there's two informations that come in: is the name and then the email address. And that we're going to present it over here. See, in its text piece, we'll come into our um, default, which is right there. And in the default, I'm gonna put in the var winner dot name. And it'll present it over here. Now, if you wanna be extra careful, you can also go ahead and put in var winner dot email. And you can put that in a very small text, just in case two people with the same name walk up as, hey, I'm the raffle winner. It's like, oh, wait, there's two of them. Oh, but I have an email address. That way we can find out who's the unique person. So you could do that. And that'll, for example, be, you know, go ahead and do a control C, control V, I get a smaller one. And I'll make it a little smaller, change the font size to say 11. And for this one, it's default value. I'll change that to email. So email. That way you can always be, you know, 100% sure. But honestly, we are done. We've gone ahead and now finished the entire process. What we do need to do is upload some data into that SharePoint list. And I'm gonna fast forward through this and I'll just fill up some information and then we can do the testing together. So, so voila, I was able to go ahead and populate about 35 items over here. That way we can actually have a good test of the flow. So let me go back now to our Power Apps and we'll do a test. 
So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click on submit. In the submit, you can see the answer marching over there. So it has gone ahead and magically picked a winner. But let's go through the process, like what happened, all right? So let's go into our flow in the auto raffle ticket flow. This was the one that just ran. So I click on that one. And let's see how those steps went through. So in the first step, flow uh, when the app just uh, the flow trigger from Power Apps. But in the get item, it went ahead and made sure that it was only getting those ones which are filtered. Compose, it went ahead and get me 35 items. So we already know that, hey, there are 35 of them from the people who have not won, where the one equals no. And then I go ahead and initialize the variable and I randomly pick number 27. So let's go and take a look at number 27 on the SharePoint list. If I go and actually first gotta go and add my ID column so we can actually see what happened over here. Go to my all items. I'll go ahead and grab that ID column. I'll put it over here, two, one. And that way the ID column is always in one. And that's basically it. You know, we just randomly pick something. So I just put that ID column there, but let's go and filter by. There is a yes. See, that's great because if there wasn't a yes, that option for yes would not show up over here. So we have randomly picked ID 27. We've got randomly uh, assigned, which is Isaac Morales over here. Isaac's name showed up over here. And we also went ahead and changed that value to yes. So let's think about that for a minute, right? Initially, the outputs were 35. We went and picked 35 outputs. We went ahead and did all the update. We did the get items. We put specifically put that ID 27. We went ahead and updated to that value, returned up, you know, the email address and everything there. But if I want to run this again, I am already estimating that the next time the poll should not be 35. Like right now, the poll over here is 35 items. Um, it should be 34 because we only have 34 who have not won. And then we should get another item here uh, value. So let's do a test. I'll go ahead and submit. It randomly goes ahead and picks up Mike. Now let's go see what happens here. I'll go, the second one is completed. And in the second one, all of that is completed in the get items. It went and pulled all the items. This time, ah, see, our guessing, I mean, our, our, our logical thinking was correct because now there were only 34 items whose items were not won. So it is keeping track. Our get items is working. It is going ahead and filtering all those which are yes. And it's also going and now randomly picking a number, which was 29. It randomly picks, you know, it will go and randomly pick any one, seven, 29, as long as they stay in that uh, area over there. And then it will go ahead and update that SharePoint list as well. So if I go and now refresh this in the ones, I should see two over here. So it works and it works really well. So thanks for sticking around till the end. Now, if you haven't already noticed, we have successfully also taken the raffle ticket process to a completely digital level. Like there's no paper involved whatsoever. So you could do this completely virtually. If you've got a virtual event or a virtual summit, which is 100% online, well, now you have a raffle ticket, which can go completely online as well. All you need to do is in the form, just make sure that you have a postal address field so that you do have an address to send it to the end user. Also, the last thing I want to do is be careful when you go ahead and fill out the form, um, fill out the flow, uh, specifically the get items, which is always on the top, and then the get item, which is on the below. And the get items does have a O data filter. So it only pulls all those information of the users who have not won anything yet, making this a fully raffle ticket experience because it'll pull all the ones, all the raffles that the person has filled in. It is recording those in that SharePoint list. So the more the person has filled in, the more higher options the person has to win doing the exact same paper raffle ticket experience. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Power Platform. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.